Hello and welcome to my latest video on Neon Editor. And in this video I want to outline some tricks and tips that uh, you may not know about and will definitely make your life a lot easier. But let's begin with a nice new feature I've recently added. Pull me in and you push me out. So as you can hear there I've loaded a little vocal line and I'm going to perform some in-place edits on that vocal line. And to do that we first need to head off to the settings and uh, ensure waveform scaling is enabled. Now when waveform scaling is enabled, um, pinch to zoom, uh, left to right, uh, zooms in and out, but uh, vertical pinch to zoom allows us to scale audio. So if I pinch and zoom in the upper left channel here, we can see I've affected that audio in the left channel. I'm going to do the same here on the right channel, and you can see the scaling of the right channel. Now if I pinch in the middle of the screen, we see you see we alter both channels at the same time. Now let me undo that and uh, show you another, another good use of this. Uh, because this is a stereo uh, waveform, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just pinch and uh, close my fingers up to reduce the volume to such an extent that the actual waveform uh, is, um, is reduced to nothing. And uh, in this way, I can um, bias those uh, individual samples to left or right channels. Pull me in and you push me out. Pull me in and you push me out. Now, I recently had a user that wanted to uh, hum a tune into uh, Neon and then to transcribe it and find out what the notes were that he was humming. And we can do that quite simply in Neon, uh, as you can see here. I have a little melody and I'm going to try and ascertain what the notes are that that singer is singing. And to do that, the simplest way is to open the Tuner app, uh, which is a little window here which we can drag and drop uh, where we want. And uh, when we start playing back this tune, it will display the notes within the window. Now, it might be if you've got a fast set of fast running notes that you want to uh, get in and find out exactly uh, uh, the note at a specific point and you could do that just by dragging around that cursor and as long as scrubbing is enabled in settings you will hear that note alternatively just press the particle button on the toolbar and it, it will play the uh, a little looped sample version of what's on, currently under the cursor now we can always long press on that particle button to adjust uh, the particle engine settings uh, and having a slightly bigger or smaller buffer may help uh, recognize those notes a little bit better so you might need to play with that. Now as well as a, a tuner um, Neon also uh, has a spectrum analyzer hidden away in that same menu and this is a resizable window and it allows us to see the spectrum of any sound at a particular point. So uh, currently I have that particle engine turned on and as I drag the cursor around we're getting a spectrum breakdown of whatever frequencies are involved in that little section of audio under the cursor. Now the spectrum analyzer gives a, a, an overview of not only the fundamental frequency but also the harmonics involved in that and uh, if we pull out the, um, the, um, the wave generator and, uh, and and play a sine wave, we'll see that a single pure tone uh, shows nicely within the spectrum analyzer. And as we turn on various harmonics by picking triangular and say sawtooth wave, you see the additional harmonics that come in there. What you should have noticed there is the fundamental note that we're hearing is the lowest note, and everything above is just a harmonic of that note. Now one thing I should have pointed out with the tuner is that if you tap in the tuner display it'll toggle between the actual note and the frequency readouts. Now I want to go over a way of, or a couple of ways really, of uh, extracting uh, sections of audio and uh, exporting those as individual files. And uh, there are a number of ways but the first way I'm going to show you is using slice mode. So if we hit the uh, slice button on the left toolbar, we can now simply uh, draw 
an area on screen uh, which represents a slice so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw three individual slices just by dragging my finger over the waveform now these three slices that I've got here can be joined together by enabling the snap button at the bottom and then when we drag one of the boundaries of this of sli a slice it will snap to the previous or next slice uh, we can just pick up the uh, these uh, start and end points and uh, maneuver them to encapsulate the audio we need to export and that looks something like correct now if we enable preview we could then tap on these slices to preview them and make sure that they are playing what we want them to play and once we're happy with the the slices we press the export slice button and uh, give that a name and that will create a folder containing those slices which could be found in the media bay so if we look uh, for the test folder uh, we can see the slices and if i tap uh, on the slices we can preview them one at a time now if you've got a lot of slices uh, to make or the the sample you're pulling the individual slices from is very long there might be an easier way which is uh, to simply uh, create a new folder within the media bay and uh, in this case i'm just going to create a folder called slices which uh, we can use to pop uh, these uh, extracts into and what we're going to do then we're going to um, go into the slices folder and then as you can see now i'm not actually in slice mode but i'm making a selection here and once I've got a selection I'm happy with, I'm going to tap and hold on the clipboard icon and just drag the uh, little icon that appears into the media bay. And I'm going to do that for every single uh, section of audio that I want to pull out of this uh, master file. And uh, here we go with the third one. And just like we did before, we can preview these just by uh, tapping on the uh, individual slices. And that method of dragging selected audio using the clipboard button also allows you to transfer uh, audio to other apps using drag and drop. Now, if there's one thing I'm constantly asked about, it's how to change the uh, BPM of an audio file, especially for use outside of Neon. So... I'm going to uh, load a, uh, a a beat here, um, and that beat, uh, if you look at that file, it's 118 beats per minute. But notice that the actual main tempo does, hasn't changed on load. Now, the way we manipulate tempos within Neon is to use the warp function. And the warp icon on the toolbar, as you can see here, is currently turned off. But if I long press on that warp button, we get the warp options. And in here, you'll see the original tempo is set to 118. So it was detected on load. Now, if you did want Neon's master tempo to conform to that of the file you just loaded, you can do so by clicking on tempo and then long pressing on the tap tempo button. And you'll see that it's set to 118. Now to set the whole file in loop mode, just long press the loop button and then when we play back we can hear the perfect looping at 118 BPM. But what if we want to change that BPM to something else? Well on those occasions we need to turn on the warp, but uh, I'm going to just uh, select a, a new tempo for this uh, file, um, maybe 128 BPM or something. Try not to go too far away from the original otherwise it'll sound very unnatural. And now if we, we enable the warp button, you'll notice that the waveform actually conforms to the four bars that we know that, uh, that, that there is within this, within this audio file. And uh, if we long press on the loop button to select the loop and play back, you'll hear that it sounds uh, perfectly okay at 128 BPM. Now we're open to now change this uh, BPM, this master BPM, to anything we want. And on playback, it will conform and it will sound uh, perfect, like a perfect loop. Just be careful though not to get, like I say, to go too far away from the original. Otherwise it does, sound, it does start to sound a little bit artificial. Now let's suppose we want to export this file at 122 BPM. 
In this case, we set the master tempo to 122 BPM and then uh, go to the uh, warp settings by long pressing the warp button. Now simply pressing the render button will now convert that uh, wave file to 122 BPM. Well, you'll notice now the warp is not turned on. So this file is actually be re-rendered at 122 BPM and we can save it out to use in another package. Now one other great trick with Neon is the ability to construct beats out of a kind of bass beat. Uh, I have a little, uh, a little file here. Um, the important thing here is that the drag and drop mode in settings needs to be set to in place, drag, drag and drop in place. And then we can do some fancy stuff here. I'm going to set the, uh, the grid so that it snaps uh, nicely to uh, quarter notes so that I can now make a selection of that whole beat. I'm going to tap and hold on the clipboard icon and drag and drop uh, that whole beat uh, onto the end of what we currently yeah. have. Now, I can now even select, uh, uh, say, a quarter of that, one bar, and uh, just drag that and drop it on the end. Uh, and obviously, to uh, make that sound right, I'll probably have to do that another three times. I'll just grab the uh, two of them. Right, so now we have a beat. I'll long press the loop button and play that back. And you, can, you can do this by, you can grab different sections of the original beat and then move them around and overlay them. And uh, you can get some very, very uh, interesting results by doing this. Uh, but uh, like I say, in order to use that functionality, ensure that the, uh, the drag and drop mode in settings is set to in place. So most of you will be familiar with applying effects to uh, an audio track but uh, I want to go over how to apply an effect to just either the left or the right audio channel. So I have a drum beat loaded and I'm going to make a selection uh, on this waveform which will correspond to where I want to overlay a delay. And if I long press on the operations button and pick delay, uh, we get the delay up. Now I'm going to enable preview and I'm going to set up some parameters and then just hit play so we can preview what that effect sounds like. Now as most of you know, to apply the effect to both channels, you just hit the apply button and the effect will be applied to both channels. And you'll see that the delay actually uh, extends beyond the selection to the right. Um, so we get like a smooth transition. Now I'm going to undo that and uh, instead of applying it like we did to both channels I'm going to tap and hold the apply button and uh, we get uh, more options when we do that including the ability to pick a left and right channel. Now I've applied that to the left channel I'm moving my selection I'm going to apply it to the right channel and we should be able to preview that and hear it, the effect ping-ponging backward and forward. And that works equally well when we use something like reverb or any of the other effects. So uh, yeah, that's a fantastic uh, little trick there for you to uh, remember. Now another thing I've been constantly asked is what is the little uh, duck icon on the toolbar for? And uh, to demonstrate that I'm going to uh, demonstrate uh, the ability to uh, duck uh, an audio file, an audio background uh, file uh, using a vocal narrative or input from a live microphone. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do this inside of AUM. So as you can see here, I have a, um, an instance of Neon loaded as an effect over the top of a vocal track. Now that could easily be a microphone, um, but the important thing here is we need to turn uh, the audio monitor on so that that vocal that we've got there uh, that I'll just play for you, uh, can um, upon a time, pass through the uh, ne instance Neon. of Neon. If you if you don't have the monitor on, uh, you will not hear uh, that vocal. It will be cut off once Neon starts playing. Now if I start Neon playing and then 
play the vocal over the top, the uh, you'll hear that uh, the two are fighting with each other. We can't There's necessarily make out the vocal um, for the for the music being so loud. So the idea is to enable the ducking feature, and uh, we do that by pressing the little duck icon on the toolbar. And if we long press that icon, we also get a bunch of options here. Now, once ducking is enabled, uh, the background audio track will be uh, reduced in volume whenever there's any narration. And the amount of ducking is controlled by the threshold knob. So let's give that a listen. Once upon a time, there was an editor called Neon. And if we decrease that threshold knob too much, you'll notice that it's nearly all uh, vocal and very little of the background music track. Once upon a time, there was an editor called Neon. This editor was the king of all editors. It was made for iOS. I'm being a little bit tongue-in-cheek there, but I think you get the idea. So let me just go through a few quick tips and shortcuts that you may not know about. The first one of these is when you're using the media bay. Uh, most of you uh, will be familiar with the media bay and you'll know that when you load a file within the media bay, uh, the media bay automatically closes. So uh, in this instance, if I load that file, the media bay is closed. Uh, and there, ma there might be instances where you want the media bay to remain open so you can test various files. Now you can do that by uh, changing the option in the settings to keep the media bay window open while you uh, while you load various files in and preview them and once you're done press the media bay button to close the uh, the window now long pressing the menu button displays the overview and this is very handy when you're zoomed into a waveform so you can see exactly whereabouts you are within that file now for any time you want to zoom out fully you can just press and hold the media bay button and it will zoom so that the whole file fills the screen. Also, if you make a selection, you can tap and hold on the magnify button to zoom to that selection. So there's two very useful little shortcuts there. And finally, you can turn off the grid setting by just long pressing on the grid button. Uh, that will allow you to uh, make uh, changes uh, without actually snapping to the grid. You can long press it again to return to the last snap mode. Very handy. So that's just about it for this tricks and tips video. I hope you find something useful here. Uh, don't forget to thumb up the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.